Who's Flying Your Plane? Friday on Evening Magazine. The good news about bad news. That's right. Sharing troubles with our children helps to ease their fears. You bet. And Dr. Ray Garendi is here to talk family crisis and the kids. We've also got weekend trips to take this Memorial Day with the kids and theme picnic bas baskets to put together and make it all very special. Parades and all kinds of good things. Yeah. Plus, a look at what Pittsburghers collect, including a Clark Gable memorabilia collection, t-shirts, and autographed signatures. We've got that and we've got trivia too. I'm Patrice King-Brown. I'm John Burnett and this is Pittsburgh Today. As parents, we try to watch what we say and do when the kids are around, don't we? We probably protect them too much from what may harm or scare them. But when do you decide to share troubles or bad news with your child? Dr. Ray Garendi is here today to help us understand that sharing troubles may not be all that bad. For kids' sake, welcome Dr. Ray Garendi to Pittsburgh today. Hi, Raymond. Hi, John. How are you? Boy, oh boy, that hand came up to attention I when know, I walked I up. It was like well. we haven't seen each other in so long, and I just wanted to acknowledge publicly the fact that I am modeling my new hairstyle after yours. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to change mine, and I'm going to have to probably do a little adjusting here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm getting suspicious. Well, we're off to our usual start, aren't we? I'm suspicious getting a little about... suspicious. We're talking about... Um, Children, family crises today, right? Ab absolutely. Well, last I heard, yeah. Unless you want to change the subject. Our subjects, I noticed this, every few months when we get together, our subjects are mirroring the ages of your children. As your kids are moving up, we are dealing with these things as they move My? through your age. Is this your way of getting psychological service without pay? We're talking free counseling here, baby. Hey, this. you got it. No bills. But everybody has been through this kind of thing, everybody with kids, and certainly Patrice is in the same category, so I can't take all the blame for scheduling this topic. It is a good one, is it mm -hmm. not? Yeah. And it can pertain to all ages from 3 to 13 to 19. To 25 while they're still in your all house. All the way up. Mm -hmm. So how is it that we want to shield our kids from so much? I can remember my dad coming home from work and never being willing to tell me anything about it and never sharing with me the difficulties of his day or why he was acting the way he was acting I ended up thinking half the time it was because of me we can shield them John we can shield the kids we can try but it won't happen they're going to sense they are perceptive little buggers yeah they're going to sense something's wrong with dad dad has got something on his mind a three-year-old may not think to himself well, my father looks a bit preoccupied today. I wonder what kind of psychological trauma is affecting him. You yes. know, he's not going to think like that, but he's going to look at Dad and say, Daddy's sad. Why is Daddy sad? Daddy's not talking to me. Why is Daddy not talking to me, Mommy? Why is Daddy just sitting staring at the TV? There's nothing on, Mommy. Yeah. They pick up things like that real quick. Yeah, so we quicker can, than we think. We can try to shield them, but it's not going to happen. What kinds of things can we tell them, and what kinds of things can't we tell them? Okay. One of the first things I would suggest to the folks is that as parents, oftentimes the most agonizing thing for us is we wrestle. We wrestle with our words. We think, am I saying this right? Mm -hmm. Am I using the right logic? Am I beyond his level of comprehension? We second guess ourselves a lot. Am I saying too lot. much? Yes. What happens then is we start to stumble. We become unsure of ourselves. We're not quite confident in what we're saying. I guess my personal first law of crises management is to be yourself don't worry so much about what words you choose what logic you use trust yourself to explain the situation to your youngster at his level but what if it's something ray that you have trouble talking about with anybody what if you have just lost your job okay. what if your mother has just died the kid's grandparent i mean how do you how do you broach that subject okay sometimes the kids make it easy for us john they'll ask us They'll say something. Basically, they might come up to you. Now, we're talking what range here? Three, four, five, six, eight, ten? Well, let's see. Sammy's eight, Eric's <laughs> yeah, four. Then, guy's so nine. Guy's <laughs> nine, and Lauren's three. So let's go three to okay, nine. Okay, three to nine. Somehow yeah. I had that suspicion. <clears throat> the kids. Let's take the three. Let's take Lauren. She's three and a half. You know, she might notice. Let's say Patrice comes home and said, you know, John was on the set today, and he was in a bad mood because he just found out that they repossessed his car in his house again. Yeah, again. Yeah, I mean, John was upset. I Patrice remember that day. Patrice comes home, and she is obviously, obviously not herself. Mm -hmm. Now, Lauren, 
if she's a perceptive little three-year-old or if she's a normal three-year-old is going to notice something. And she may say something. She say, Mommy, how come you're not, how come you're not playing with me? She'll, she'll come up with it. So in some, ca some cases, they will make it easy for mm -hmm. us. They'll it's, instigate. Yeah, they will. Mm -hmm. In other situations, let's say that Lauren's out and she's, she's just having a grand old time playing and she comes in and she doesn't really notice that Patrice is that upset. But lo and behold, long about 8 or 8.30, the daily routine that Patrice gets into with Lauren, maybe they miss the story that they always tell, you know, and Patrice just didn't tell the story. Lauren hasn't quite picked up on it, but Patrice notices that Lauren's behavior is starting to change to reflect Patrice's. For example, maybe Lauren isn't quite her gay old self. Maybe she doesn't come up and say, Mommy, Mommy, we can take my bath now? We can take my bath? Instead, she just kind of sits and kind of aimlessly plays with some blocks. A little distant. A little distant. Patrice then can go up to Lauren and say, Come here, Lauren, I want to tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to tell you that we missed our story today. And it wasn't because I didn't want to tell you a story. It was because I was thinking about some things that happened at work, and I just got carried away. You know, you can go up to the kids, you can tell them what's on your mind in language that they understand. A lot of times parents will say, well, I don't want to tell them too much. No, I don't want to overload them. I don't want to give them too much. Sure, we're concerned about yeah. that. Typically, we don't. Typically, if we tell them essentially the basics of what happened, you know, um, Daddy didn't have his job today. Daddy found out that he's not going to be working at that place anymore. Mm -hmm. So Daddy's kind of sad about that. So Daddy's going to have to start to find some work. A lot of times when you tell kids something, make sure that they see you can handle it. Mm -hmm. so that's the one thing that really scares kids. You know, we are the people they look up to. They look at you and they think, well, you know, my security here, mm -hmm. my, my leader, my protector is falling apart. Okay, that scares them very, 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 very much. So in that case, should a person put off, should a parent put off bad news like the death of a grandparent or, or the, the, the loss of a job no. until they can handle it, until they no. can deal with it themselves? Well, what happens is it'd be nice to be able to do that, but the kids will pick up on it long, long before yeah. we think we can handle it. So what we have to do, I think, is to tell the kids basic language, you know, Daddy found out that Mommy's very, very sick. Mommy's very, very sick, and we're going to have to go to the doctors a lot, and Daddy's kind of sad about that, Mommy's kind of sad about that, so we're going to do our best to really get Mommy well again. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we're going to be sad, but that's okay, because we're going to work with the doctors, and we're going to make sure that we can help Mommy along. You know, again, there's that double message there. Here's what's happening, but you can count on us to stand firm. We will deal with it as best we can. Even sometimes, I'll go so far as to say this, even sometimes if inside... You have real doubts mm -hmm. about whether you can handle this. I think you can at least tell the kids, I'm going to give it my best shot Yeah, kind of thing. So oh, a certain amount of shielding, I would think, a certain amount yeah. of rose-colored effect a little bit. is not bad. No, no, no. You don't have to just be flat out blunt with them on everything. Right. You know what I mean? You know, Daddy lost his job, I'm and I doubt, my boss. I, yeah, I doubt yeah. that there's ever a way he's going to ever work around here again, and we're going to have to move to and, Kansas know, next for month. For heaven's right. sakes, yeah, we don't have to get into all of that. Okay, we'll take a quick break. Come back with Ray on more about bad news and your kids. Stay tuned. If you have questions about how and when to share the bad news with your children, call us at 333-9363. That's a large with pepperoni. It takes a lot of dough Delivered to the dorm to get a degree. Higher education has a higher price, but at Washington Federal, we can help. Our low interest fee loans feature payments that are deferred until six months after you leave school. A variety of types of schooling are eligible. So see us for details today and get a bigger piece of the pie tomorrow. Washington Federal, your hometown bank. If you're planning a holiday picnic, start with savings from Shop and Save. This week, high-grade Grillmaster Frank's great on the grill, 49 cents a pound. Your favorite green giant frozen vegetable, 99 cents a package. Regular or light wishbone salad dressings, 169 a bottle. And maximum strength Anison 3 caplets or aspirin-free tablets, 389 a package. Shop for the difference at Shop and Save. 
Hello, I'm Larry Richard with a Wake Up Cycle. We'll be at Shenley Park on June 11th for the 1989 Great Ride. It's a chance for the entire family to raise money for Children's Hospital while pedaling through KD Country. All riders get a free T-shirt and top fundraisers can win great prizes, bikes, riding gear, even a trip to Hawaii. Pick up your application at any participating Long John Silver Seafood Shop, City Parks Recreation Centers, or area bike shops. The 1989 Great Ride. Since 1983, Eyewitness News' Stacy Smith has reported the significant events that shape our community while adopting Pittsburgh as home for him and his family. And researchers here at the University of Pittsburgh say the shots came from this building. The Texas School Book Depository should be packed as Michael Dukakis comes here to accept the Democratic Party's presidential But aside nomination. from the headlines, he's made a continuing commitment to people in need throughout KD country. Eyewitness News' Stacy Smith, part of the home team on KDKA TV2. with Dr. Ray Garundi about what kinds of things you do share with the children. How often must you shield them? How much do you let them know? Ray, I'm wondering when you, as a parent, are sitting down and talking to kids, what are the taboo topics? Taboo? Absolutely taboo. No hint, no clue, nothing. I'm not so sure there's any anymore. Mm -hmm. Affairs? Again, okay, again, you're, you're dealing in many variables here. You're dealing with the age of the child. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say, okay, let's say, for example, that mommy and daddy are having a difficult time in their relationship, and maybe it is due to one or both of the partners having an affair. Mm -hmm. Depending on the age of the child, once again, you don't have to get into all the specifics. You can simply say that, you know, mommy and daddy right now, and the chi child knows it, let's assume, mommy and daddy right now are, are having some things we have to work out. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we get mad at each other when we really shouldn't, and sometimes we get mad at each other pretty quick. What we have to do is find some ways not to get mad at each other so quick. Another thing that happens, this is really a key point. Kids fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. We adults all do this. We all do it. We I'm all sure. do this. When we size up a situation, if there is holes and we don't understand what's going on in that situation, you we put in our own perceptions. And a lot of times our perceptions are fantasies. They're irrational, way off the mark kinds of notions. Children do this as much as we do, if not more. Therefore, with kids, some of the more common misperceptions are, it's my fault, it's my, daddy's mad at me, mommy's mad at me, it's my fault, daddy's sad, it's my fault, mommy and daddy are breaking up, it's my fault this happened, it's my fault that this particular person got hurt because if I wouldn't have been playing with him, he wouldn't have got hurt because if I'd have had him come in the house with me like he was supposed to come in the house with me, he wouldn't have got hurt. On and on and on. On and on and on. As a parent, a lot of times, it's good to try to tune in on those to know what some of them are. The blame one is a big one tell the child this isn't your fault you didn't do anything at all this is something that daddy is working on this is something that daddy has to feel better about definitely focus on that another thing that happens is the kids want to know we're okay if mm -hmm. they see mommy or daddy crumbling ah, that's kind of scary reinforce for them even if you're not so sure yourself Give yourself the benefit of the doubt. What if mommy and daddy are crumbling? What if mommy and daddy are getting a divorce? There obviously comes a time then you're going to have to deal with the subject. You know, if it becomes very clear that this is going to happen in no uncertain terms, it is coming, the lawyers have been visited or the lawyers are being contemplated, then I think it's time, depending on the age of the child, to sit down and talk a little bit. And yet to again reassure them that it's not their fault and not they their will still fault. have two parents? And they will still have two parents and things as much as possible will not be changed in their lives. As much as possible. Obviously there are going to be some changes. Sure. You know, you're going to be living with mommy now and daddy will come to see us and you will visit daddy. Or sometimes that's not even going to happen. Mm -hmm. you know, but again, you don't have to necessarily deal with it until it's here. And what I'm saying is don't anticipate. You know, if you suspect, you know, my spouse is a bum. My spouse is not going to visit this kid every week. And my spouse isn't going to come and pick up this kid on Wednesdays. You don't have to tell the child that. You don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. You know, deal with it as it becomes closer and closer to a reality. Don't forecast. Yeah, there's no sense doing that. Deborah in Pittsburgh, go ahead with your call, Deb. Yes, early on in the program, you mentioned that if you keep things from your children, they may come to you later on and question why you kept it from these things from them. I have an older child who is dying of an illness and I have not told his siblings yet. And I was wondering if I should until it becomes necessary. Wow. How old are the siblings, Deb? Well, they're in their teens and one's 20. 
but and the one who is ill is uh, in his early 30s. Why don't you discuss it, Deb, with the one who is ill? Why don't you find out what his or her wishes are on that? He doesn't have an opinion. We have gone that route, and he doesn't care one way or the other how I handle it. He wants me to handle it the best way for the kids and for me. I can give you my personal opinion, Deb, and I want to stress this. There is no prescription right or wrong to this. My personal opinion is I would probably let the children know because I think they would have very strong feelings about their brother and what they would like to do, say, mm -hmm. share with their brother in the time that he is left here on Earth. Okay. Good luck, Good luck to you. Good luck to you, Deborah. It's a very, very difficult thing to face. Extremely difficult. And that's one of those situations where, you know, obviously you could hear mom and you could see the emotion, you could hear sure, the emotion sure. in her voice. No question about it. When she tells the siblings, it's going to be tough. And I think that, again, for this particular mom, she can say to the sibling, she can acknowledge, this is devastating to me. This is very, very hard for me. I will have to deal with this, and it will take time. I think if the kids know that, if they know it up front, this is going to take time. Also, often, the kids will look at us, and this is true with anybody. They will see you, and they will think, this, is, this has been four months now and mom is still crying. You know, mom still goes off into her room and cries. This has been four months now. Come on, mom, get on with your life. But if the kids better understand that four months is, is not long to grieve mm -mm. for the death of a family member, then they won't be so nervous that mom is falling apart. And Ray, I would understand. venture to think these kids at their ages have an idea anyway. I mean, they could probably, probably not be a, a tremendous support system to, for her right. if she could open up to yes. them. Uh, they might be a big help. Deb, best of luck to you. Uh, let's take this commercial break. We'll be right back. Amy, you stay on the line. and masterpiece all tried out doing but as sweet smoke rose from his grill the stranger stood undaunted because once folks tried that big bold taste it was bullseye that they wanted and throughout the land they chose one brand bullseye beat the rest and showdown after showdown only bullseye is the best the big bold taste of bullseye that's the best Get those legs from under the desk, put on those sneakers, and suit up for the first Pittsburgh Corporate Challenge 10K. Hi, I'm Bill Flanagan. Pittsburgh Young Professionals encourages companies to field teams for a 10K race through the Golden Triangle, as well as the north and south sides. The race date is Saturday, June 3rd, and begins at 8.30 a.m. at Three River Stadium. Proceeds benefit Children's Hospital's Free Care Fund. To enter a team, call 263-10KM. See if your company is good enough to win the Corporate Challenge Cup. Born and raised in KD country, Patty Burns has a lifetime of experience in television news. Hundreds of thousands of pilgrims are flocking to the eternal city and its ruins. Among them, many Pittsburghers. And just the fact that the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra was invited here to play in Beijing, China. From across the globe to our neighborhood, she provides local insight to the news, bringing the headlines of the world home to you. Eyewitness News Patty Burns, part of the home team on KDK TV2. Bad news in our kids, Dr. Ray Garendi. What can we expect when someone like Deborah has to give the message to her two children that their older sibling is dying? Uh, how can she expect them to react? And I know it's, it's, it's on an individual basis, so it's hard to predict. But generally speaking, I guess what I'm saying, are kids uh, more resilient than we give them credit for? Being? Yes. Yes, they really are, especially the younger ones. 
You know, a lot of times we project. We project our feelings onto the kids. We know how intense this is hitting us. We project it onto the child. A classic example, I had a, a client of mine, he was nine years old. His little brother, about a year ago, was hit by a car and killed. The parents brought the boy in for counseling. It was clear that the parents' own grief, as intense as it was, was being mirrored in the boy because he, he couldn't quite grasp the whole concept. He knew he missed his brother. He knew he wasn't going to see his brother anymore, but he wasn't reacting like they thought he would react. Mm -hmm. He didn't, didn't really grasp it. And I think sometimes with the younger kids, they don't grasp the magnitude of a particular event. Also, for example, with Deborah with the older teenagers, when she tells them this, I think she can expect that they're going to react and maybe, maybe strongly, the older kids. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, that's okay. It doesn't mean you're going over the psychological edge if you are truly down, depressed, upset, nervous over a major life stressor. It is a major life stressor and we have to allow people to react intensely like that. It's almost you know. to be expected. Well, certainly, if something were to happen to your wife, you would be ruined for a long time. You know, John would not fall apart as a person, but basically the way you function day to day would be quite different. Absolutely. That's normal. That doesn't mean you're psychologically out of balance or out of whack. Yeah. And I think we have to accept that for ourselves and the kids. We've got a phone call for you, Ray from Wilkinsburg. Amy, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, go ahead. Hi, I have a question concerning a two and a half year old child. Mm -hmm. And his father left during the ninth month of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering when he starts to question where his father is, like how would you explain it? Because there's no chance that he'll ever... He's had no, con con no contact with him since? Right, no, and he okay. won't. Okay. Ray? A couple of questions here. Are there any other men in his life? Um, yeah, there's a lot of positive male role figures in his life, grandfather and uncles. Are you dating anyone? No. Okay, so right now basically there, there is no father figure as far as you're concerned, right? Right. Okay. He asks about his his dad. Can you give us an example of what he asks? Um, well, it hasn't, you know, come up very much yet. You know, just he sees other small children calling, you know, daddy and everything. And I'm just wondering in the future when he does ask, how would you explain it to him in such a way that wouldn't, pr you know, project the bitterness or, you know, anger that I might feel? For all intents and purposes, this really isn't his dad. This is a man who basically helped you have a biological child at that point, mm -hmm. but he's not really his dad. So what I might say is that when it comes time, you might just simply, when he asks us, he's four years old and he's in preschool, Mommy, do I have a daddy? Well, yes, there was a man who helped Mommy have you, but right now we don't have a daddy. Why well, take that approach, right? That's my, own, that's my own personal thing. For example, my children are adopted, and when it comes time to tell my children this, you know, and again, when it comes time, who knows when it's time. But let's see, you know, my little boy, he's getting a little older now. He's, he's, he's two something. We're probably going to take the approach that there was another lady who had you in her stomach. And I'm not going to use the word mommy because that would confuse him, I think. I'm not going to talk about two mommies. I would basically say that mommy couldn't have you in her stomach. So there was another lady who had you in her stomach and then gave you to mommy and me. Mm -hmm. I might take that approach. And I think that's related to what this caller's calling in about. Yeah. Because this man, for all intents and purposes, the boy never knew him, and he's long since been off the picture. I'm not so sure I would bring in too much explanation about daddy, because there's a good likelihood there is going to be a daddy at some point along here, mm -hmm. and that will be daddy. this little boy's daddy. So no need to inject the possibility of guilt over an attachment that never developed. Right. Well, well thank you. <laughs> I'm learning. Ray. You are. You're getting you good. coming, and I'll keep learning. You're costing me, but you're getting good. Yeah, <laughs> right. We want to thank you, Ray Garendi, for being here. Always Thank you, John. Good advice, and let's give our kids more credit. Thank you. They can handle it. We'll be right back in just a moment to talk about unique collections. Do you know a single guy who needs a makeover and possibly a date? If so, we'd like to hear from you in our offices. Call 392-2217. Are you good and thirsty now? Ready for something really satisfying? Nothing artificial, no caffeine. 
Just a drink that nourishes, quenches. Oh, and the taste, well, there's nothing else quite like it. Right now, how about a nice cold glass of fresh, wholesome, delicious milk? Smooth, satisfying milk. Yeah. When it's time to make your mind and make it milk. It's Pool City's Memorial Day weekend sale. Five days of blockbuster savings with over 28 complete pool packages under $9.95. Get 33 to 50% off accessories from inflatables to vacuum hoses and 30 to 50% off sun chlorine plus double rebate coupon savings. Save on gas grills as low as $119, cedar gazebos as low as $8.99, spas as low as $17.95, patio sets as low as $119, plus half off any umbrella with patio set purchase and coupon. Hurry in and save now at Pool, pool City. City. Come see paintings, photography, films, the artist market, an all-new children's area, and our contemporary landscape painting exhibit. Enjoy live shows by Chuck Mangione, Livingston Taylor, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, and many more. All during the 30th anniversary Three Rivers Arts Festival, June 2nd through the 18th in downtown Pittsburgh. Come see more art, more film, more music. Come see it again. Good afternoon on Pittsburgh Today. We continue our series on unique collections, and we have a lady of the Pittsburgh area with us today, Janet Fabiankovic, who collects signatures and autographs. Janet, we're glad to have you. When did you start collecting? Oh, about 10 years ago. And why and how? Well, I write some songs, and I do some freelance articles, so mm -hmm. I decided to write to the different movie stores and see if they were interested. And fortunately, they were, and sent me some pictures and different kind of paraphernalia. you got some biggies here, yeah. too, Janet. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Zimbalist. Look at this. Now, and she's in a picture. Isn't mm -hmm. that nice? here's, here's the picture. Take time to enjoy the simple pleasures. That's nice. Very like nice. Uh, beagles licking your cheek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one, one that ma makes a difference, huh? Tom Selleck. Mm hmm. What's he said? Yeah. This yeah. One. Hey, hey. He sent a script also with it. Oh, he sent a them? script of uh, uh, Runaway. Runaway. Okay. Uh -huh. A new movie. What does yeah. he say? Aloha. Janet? Aloha. You know, he lives Tom in Hawaii. Yeah, he never right. wears any socks. That's <laughs> <laughs> we really like him. Paul McCartney. That's my favorite. <laughs> is this is your favorite one? Uh, I'm a Beatle fan from way back when. Great. So where'd you get send this one? In, in the States or did you send it to England? Uh, to England. To England. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you've got a classic here. Oh, look here. at this one. I love oh. this one. Is this... Uh, Olivia de Havilland. Mm -hmm. Olivia Miss de Havilland. Miss Melly. That's right. Uh -huh. That's right. From Gone with the Wind. I mean, I, I hate to be uh, uninformed, but is she, a, is she still living? Oh, yes. yes. Is she? Uh -huh. Okay. Yes, she is. Uh -huh. And who are these guys? I've seen their, I've seen their pictures before. Yeah, they've been That's a while. It, uh, Ron, uh, what's the name? No. I'm gonna... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And George. Ron and George. Right. That's good. This is a pretty recent one. Janet, thank, thank you very much. A couple and still story. And Bob Hope. One great mm -hmm. entertainer right here, Mr. Bob Hope. Good. And I know he's still hanging on. Yeah. yeah. Let's Funny take a look at a couple. Oh. Nat King Gold. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Who's that? Oh, Sally Struthers. Sally Struthers, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a name look like her. Mm-hmm. That's because she's sideways. A little bit, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I've there you go. Thank you very much, Janet. Keep, Thank you. Keep, keep nice collecting. Collection, Janet. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing it with us. Now, this Next. young man. Yeah, come on, right here in the middle, Tim. This is Tim. It is Berkabile. Yes. Yeah, and Tim, how old are you? I'm 10. And what's your collection? My collection is T-shirts from around the world. Now, how do you get T-shirts from around the world? Well, my, my grandfather, uh, he's in the audience, um, he's, he used to have a job where he had to travel a lot, mm -hmm. and wherever he went, he used to send me um, T-shirts. And, and whenever I went somewhere, I, I, we always got one. Mm -hmm. for, That's quite a collection, there. so you can wear your collection. Yes. Do you remember the first one? What's the first T-shirt you had? Well, it, I think it was... Look, that that. From, the, from my dad's alma mater. Yeah, from Carnegie um, Mellon. Now, that's from way around the world there. How old were you there? there? <laughs> oh, I was about three in that picture. In this picture, um, I'm wearing a T-shirt, which my grandparents got me when they went to Denver. Mm -hmm, the Broncos, the Broncos yeah. shirt. Very good. Oh, that? that's your sister. <laughs> oh, look how cute. <laughs> in that picture, me and my sister are wearing uh, matching T-shirts. Um, from Puerto Rico, which my grandparents sent me. Okay. Yeah. And John, you have this one. What's the one? This one here. Well, that's obviously. That one's from. Yeah, this is the, uh, the, the Great Wall of China, yeah. obviously. 
this. Your granddad was there? Yes. Let's get a shot of granddad, can we? Yeah, where's granddad? Granddad's on the back row. <laughs> yeah, we want to we'll see granddad. We'll get over there in just a minute. Good. And we've got Mexico. And look yes. how they keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> yeah. That's probably one of my, that's my favorite because I had it for such a long time and I love There's it. There's granddad. This Mexican one, yeah, this one's nice. Wave to the family, granddad. Now here yeah, he is. Wow. Yeah. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Now where were you? Saudi Arabia. He was in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, but, I mean, what country? Or what city, I mean? Riyadh. Oh, Riyadh. Yeah, Riyadh. One okay. of my favorite towns. <laughs> Spent a month there one weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Niagara Falls. Yeah, and this I, one is? I went there and I got that. Jimmy Buffett's. That's oh. from um, Puerto Rico. My, that's my newest one that my aunt sent me for my birthday. That's oh, pretty okay, sharp. Kirby, oh. Look at the back of that. Oh, the chameleon. That is pretty sharp. That now, where's really... this one you got on? This is well, this is from my... Um, <laughs> oh. That's right, Evan City Elementary. Evan City Elementary, an old-fashioned place. Well, that's a brand new face. <laughs> With a brand new face. There you go. <laughs> right. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> that's nice. right. Oh, we do have one. Yeah, we had another shirt for you. We have to add to your collection. Oh, sure. KD and you. There, there you go. go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. Nice job, Thank buddy. You. And finally, last but not least, we have Alice Wilde. Right in the middle there. Hi, Alice. Alice. How are you doing? Now, you Fun. have uh, the oldest collection, certainly, of the bunch. Look at this. And some of these things, I'm almost afraid to pick them up. That's they... from 1938. 1938. This is a scrapbook, a spiral-bound scrapbook. Clark Gable. You went, when did you fall in love with Clark? When I was 13. Yeah. As soon as I started, every nickel I had went into scrapbooks. Can I? My goodness. Look at this. Now, what is this? Would that be a promotion that was picture on a from... Tablet. On the front of a tablet. On a tablet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at him. They're great pictures of him. This is a potpourri of articles and pictures, and some of the other Gosh, ones... they're just falling apart. Uh, yeah, well, I don't want to be careful is. with them, yeah. But some of the other ones, I went into his war record and different pictures just of him, Mr. large pictures. Mr. Smooth. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was really... Look at this the picture, The epitome too. of masculinity. Oh, look at him. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, have you thought about having some of these... Um, uh, enclosed in, in plastic. What do they call it? Like laminated. laminated. I have 18 of them. Oh, you have, a, I have 18, 18 collections? Scrapbooks. 18 scrapbooks between 1938 so, and 1950. So that's his war record. These right. have gone with the wind. There's a lot of just different, some are just different movies. Look, some larger there's pictures. a shot of some of the, look oh, at all those scrapbooks. <laughs> did you ever write a letter to him or anything? Uh, I did, but the studio answered. And he was never in Pittsburgh. No? He never came back here. I have autographed pictures, but not uh, really from him, I don't think. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're re-releasing re uh, Gone with the Wind. They're we... showing it down in Wheeling on the 11th. Yeah, it's going to be here in Pittsburgh, too. Mm -hmm. this, I think at this the week. Playhouse. Yeah, at the Playhouse. Didn't it reopen in at Atlanta just last year? Yeah, well, I think, yes. didn't Ted Turner do it? Mm -hmm. He did something to it. I think he probably he, recolorized. He recolorized you it. have to have a copy of this movie. Do you have Gone I with do. the Wind? It's one of my I've favorite I've seen it 35 films. times at oh. last count. Oh. There you go. A true I, fan. I quit counting after that. <laughs> well, this is a fabulous collection. We want to thank you for sharing. Look, aren't they great pictures? Look at that. Now, look at Spencer Tracy. See, who we got here? We got Jane Wyman. And is this, who is this? This is Myrna Loy? Who is that? Hetty Lamar. Hetty Lamar. Oh, yeah. My husband fell in love with her. Boontown. Boontown, you think? You know, it's, I remember the first time I saw Clark Gable in Gone with the Wind. I was 13. It was at the Warner Theater, and it was re-released. Yeah. And he was at the bottom of the steps, and every woman went, oh, when he was standing at the bottom there. You have great so taste. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I Alice. named my son Clark. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> thank, you Alice. Oh, thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. We'll be back with more Pittsburgh today. Thank you, Pittsburgh Baskets, and places to go next. Be right back. Hi. Take your feet off the table. Now, here's your bag of eagle potato chips. Here's my bag of eagle potato chips. Now, we're going to open them. Not like an animal. Watch me. I open it easily. I remove one chip. Now, I taste it. Mmm. Mmm. The quintessence of taste and crunchiness. Go ahead. Ah. Uh, eagle potato chips. Everyone loves them.
Eight mothers who've been tracked down by the pregnancy police. Should women be punished for drinking or taking drugs while pregnant? Mothers and the pregnancy police on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Friday at 4 on KDKA TV 2. Sounds good to me. It's coming May 28th. That's great. What do you think? I do not. It's coming May 28th. Wow, I can't wait for this. It's coming May 28th. I like it, I like it. It's coming May 28th. Watch your favorite 11 o'clock news broadcast on Sunday, May 28th, and see what's coming. Bucks versus the Astros, Saturday at 7 on KDK TV 2. Yeah, really. <laughs> Folks, we are, we, you know, everybody's we're planning something special for Memorial Day. Well, maybe not everyone, but if you aren't planning anything special, we're going to help you plan something special. That's right. That's our job. That's why we're here today. That's right, for Memorial Day. How about this? Picnic How about that? time. Yeah, a little theme trip. All right, this is a, uh, a basket from... I guess it's uh, from SeaWorld. Well, it's like if you think if you and your family decide you want to go to SeaWorld, you and you've go got to young SeaWorld. people, right? And it, as opposed to just putting, you know, some things in a, in a pack and throw them in the back of the car and hoping everybody sleeps all the way, what you do, because that's <laughs> usually what we do, mm -hmm. you know, you you can get something fun, put it together, and the kids and the whole family can enjoy it. And this one includes what's a cute little plastic basket and munchable things. This one's kind of healthy, carrot sticks and and uh, celery, celery sticks for healthy. people to throw at the driver. Because <laughs> that's what they do. That's right. With those. And drinks. One of, you probably all know one of the best things to do about, with these drink boxes is to freeze them. Put them in plastic bags and they melt as they go along, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a cool treat then. You have something cold to drink. Take your fishing pole along. That's right. But don't let Sh Shamu and the gang see you that's have right, a fishing that's right. pole. Get away from me with that thing. That's right. But you can run over. You know, Geauga Lake has a little tiny beach, and you have little dishes that kids can play with. It's a cute little basket. Yeah. Cards. Some that's cards. for a trip to SeaWorld. You can you can get to SeaWorld from Pittsburgh, what, in about an hour and a half, two yeah, hours? Well, I guess it takes two, two and a half hours. Uh, Is it that long? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we happen to have on our handy little <laughs> note card here the directions. Yeah. You take Interstate 76, that's the Pennsylvania Turnpike, to exit 13, and then you take Route 43 north to Aurora, Ohio. I was there just last summer, and we had a blast. It was a good time. Now, there's another place pretty close to home you might not remember or might not think about. It's the Allegheny Portage Railroad Historic Site. It's in Crescent, PA, just up in the mountains a little bit, about a half mile east on old US 22 at the summit. And they've got all kinds of things. Stone, they have a quarry, they've got stone railroad ties and, and an old engine house, and there's a picnic area, nature trails, and, you know, that might be kind of a fun place. These are, by the way, this, I believe, is free, at least it's free entrance. I'm not sure about all the exhibits. Mm -hmm. But if you've got kids in the car, first of all, we have, for your picnic basket, one of those old-fashioned, this was plastic instead of metal, but... But it looks metal. But it looks metal, right. Cards are great. You can have a railroad hat, John. Mm -hmm. Too little. You can have a whistle. We don't have one. You can have a little. It's a large. But it's still too little. But it's a large. <laughs> it's a large for a four-year-old. I've got a seven. My head is almost seven and three quarters, so it's uh, not much fits it. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Listen, that's, that's big. big. <laughs> nice little loaves of bread. You can put together cute little sandwiches. This is corned beef or dried beef. Some jam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, John, it's you. It's me. So again, that's the Allegheny Portage Railroad Historic Site, yeah. Crescent, PA. Hey, 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 no country yeah. music today, sorry. <laughs> They're always begging me to sing, and I, I don't. Because I'm afraid they'll don't stop begging. No, no, no. <laughs> All right, now, another great place to visit is Fort Ligonier, and it is even closer than Aurora. It's, mm -hmm. what, an hour, 55 minutes maybe. maybe up there, up Route 30 to, uh, to Ligonier. And you can go up there and have a great time getting some early history on the western Pennsylvania area. They have reconstructed a portion of the original fort that was built in 1758. And when you get up there, you can... Uh, well, these little, you know, French and Indian people. Yeah, French and Indian guys and, and fences. <laughs> or cowboys. And uh, I don't yeah. know why you'd take a jump rope to a fort, but maybe that's uh, the Well, thing. when you get there for lunch and you want them to work out, you know, or want the kids to play afterward. I was always into these windmill things. You see, I'm still fascinated with them. They were always fun. Are they? Can you blow them from either side and get them to work? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> yes, you can. See, you can. We've Miracles got never cease. Little goodies, stone ground crackers, which are actually fabulous, and big hunks of cheese. Which are going home with us, by that's the way. Right. <laughs> Actually, they won't get out the door. Apples. <laughs> nice basket. Anyway, so that's a, a look at Fort Ligonier. Yeah. Now, this is the other place. Okay, this place is Crawford Wildlife Exhibit, which is in Breezewood, as you're, of course, 
heading out toward Ligonier. If you don't feel like stopping, you just keep right on going to mm -hmm. the Breezewood exit. Uh, there are almost 300 species of wildlife from parts of the world that are displayed in naturalistic habitats. And so what you do, of course, when you go out there to the Crawford Wildlife Exhibit is you take animal crackers mm -hmm. and Teddy Grahams. <laughs> yeah. uh, those Teddy Grahams are great. I love them. All three flavors. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Cinnamon, honey, and chocolate. I see that you <laughs> taste yeah, test. Yeah, I like that. Oh, and fish. We've got first fish pretzels, the mm -hmm. goldfish. Mm -hmm. And some wild kingdom critters, 21 pieces. And for kids, the yep. book, The Little Elephant, or Little Other Animal Stories. And another hat. We're big on hats today. This one fits a little better, actually. <laughs> Except that's supposed to, of course, come over that's, your that's eyes. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> yeah. John, it's you. Anyway, folks, these are just some of the things. What we wanted we to do today here? was just encourage you with some Ooh. of the things you might want to do. What's in that? This is the booze. Oh. Huh? <laughs> no, well, it's no, it's not. It's just lemonade. It's lemonade. But that's okay. Yeah. What's this it's, for? Yeah, they got a, no, this is not an old milk bottle. This is a... That's a milk bottle. It looks like a carafe, but it... That's wonderful. It's it, a milk see, bottle. Is it a milk bottle? Yeah. We stole that, actually, from a restaurant in New Bedford. No. Uh, <laughs> but actually, we're talking about Old Bedford, which is Old Bedford Village, which is in Bedford, PA, one mile north. Uh, the village is on US 220, and it's three quarters of a mile south of the turnpike. There's all kinds of good things like log homes and craft shops, and there is a big festival coming up on June the 24th. And we're going to eat these right now. That's right. What are those? I don't know. But Country Oat they look Squares. Too good. Yeah, Looking we're going to cook them. Well, then I better taste them to make sure it's worth the effort. But this is the old-fashioned type. You know, you've got your, your red... I mm -hmm. love these. I can never find these tablecloths. Well, now you got now one. Now I have one. <laughs> yeah, this one will never go home. Don't mention it to anyone, then I'll just take it home with me. That's right. Jacks. My daughter's mm -hmm. learning to play jacks. It was always a fun game. Mm -hmm. Tough in the car, though, unless you have a station wagon. Yeah. But anyway, yes. but we do, so it works. Anyway, folks, these are just some of the... And you can have some lemonade. Cheers. Cheers. See, even John and I cheers with lemonade. And are these squares good? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to make them when we, re when we return. If you're a member, folks, of West Penn AAA, they have all the information on the places we've mentioned. Many, many more that can be a quick trip and enjoyable for you and your family. And they also have information on how to be a member. We'll be back in a moment on Pittsburgh Today with Country Oak Square. Good cooking coming up. It's trivia time, and the 25th caller with the correct answer will win a pair of tickets to the red-hot, innovative performance of the Frankfurt Ballet. And the question is, name the weekend travel spot suggested that boasts over 300 animal species. Call 333-9363 with the answer. Why am I doing this again? KDKA Radio's John Cigna is learning firsthand. This isn't going to hurt, is it? Oh, brother. About the KDKA traffic tower. Whatever happened to elevators? The team of KDKA and AAA brings you frequent traffic updates to keep Pittsburgh moving. Oh, we're moving, all right. Whoa! The KDKA traffic tower with AAA spotters reporting live from high atop the U.S. Steel Building. I believe this. You can believe that John Cigna and the KDKA traffic tower will make the drive you take a... Piece of cake. Mornings on KDKA Radio. Now through Memorial Day, save on cool, comfortable leather sandals, women's sizes, girls' sizes. Now $3.99. Pick where you should take your pick. At Specter Law Offices, personal injury law is our business. We help injured people get the money they deserve. And we charge no fees, not a nickel, unless we collect for you. If you've been hurt in an auto accident, a fall or other accident, or by a faulty product, we can help you. For a totally free consultation, call Spectre Law Offices now at 642-2300 or toll free. Keep pace with the ever-changing issues that affect the decision makers of our nation with Leslie Stahl. And stay a step ahead of your local business news with money editor Bill Flanagan. So join me for the financial section and CBS's Leslie Stahl for Face the Nation. That's every Sunday morning here on KDKA TV2. From his roots in New Brighton, Pennsylvania, to the changing face of the Soviet Union, Eyewitness News' Ray Tannehill has covered our hometown stories for over 20 years. I had a chance to visit with Bishop Wuerl's father. We're about to cross over this border. The president and the general secretary will discuss the future. From the summits in Washington and Moscow, he's journeyed to the origins of the news that ultimately affects our home in KD country. Eyewitness News' Ray Tannehill, part of the home team on KDKA TV2. As promised, we're cooking. 
That's right. And today it is Country Oat Squares, those delightful, delectable little tidbits that I was munching on just a moment ago. They were really good. They were fabulous, and so we're going to make some of our own. So it's one of the nice things we... This is not one of our fight the fat recipes, but you can still continue to kind of fight the fat. There yeah. is no cholesterol in this recipe at all, as we have uh, put one of the spray oils on the baking pan. We're using margarine, oh, right? Not, what is that? It's, it's got a lime... Well, it's just corn oil cooking spray. It's room deodorant. Yeah. Room deodorant. No. Yeah. No. It's some aerosol we sprayed in our so pan there. We're going to use one cup. Of, I'm going to mix one cup of soft margarine. And now you have a container. I love these things because now you have a container for other stuff. You know? What kind of stuff do you keep well, in Well, you can put other little food or you can put jacks. And, well, I was going to say Lawrence Jacks. Yeah, Lawrence Jacks. In fact, this will go. I'll take this home, too. But no. <laughs> Just kidding. So we've got that. We've got three-quarter cup of, of brown sugar. See? <laughs> and we've got one and three-quarter cups of flour. I better start doing something with that, because that's going to be hard to stir. Tracy, am I making these small enough? I'm never sure about it. You could do it. Look, you make them a little smaller. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> but you don't have to. Step on it. Yeah, step Bub's telling step on it. I know. Well, that would be the way Bub would do it. Just <laughs> he cooks about as well as I do. Yeah. Okay, so you kind of mix this all up, and I'm going to add to this as we're mixing it a teaspoon of cinnamon. This, you know, this, this cinnamon and oat stuff, it reminds me just of stuff that we used to have when I was a kid. So it's kind of, again, a, a warm fuzzy. Yeah, and it's big you know, now. It's coming, I mean, it's in the cereals, you know. Uh, lots of oats, lots of cinnamon, it seems like, mm -hmm. are new flavors. You're not seeing as much... Uh, heavy sugar as, as we did when we were Sugary born. sugaries. Yeah, well, I mean... Which is what we used to eat. They've still got frosted flakes. With sugar flakes. on them. They still have, yeah, right. Put, put sugar, you know you're addicted when you put sugar on your frosted flakes, That's true. Right? <laughs> That's true. They even took the name off. They took sugar... It's not sugar frosted flakes anymore. It's just frosted flakes. It's just frosted flakes. Yeah. So, anyway, we kind of mixed this up a little bit. See, it's the little things in life that we remember and notice. That's mm -hmm. true. I didn't add any... Did I add oats? No. I knew there was something missing from you this. You don't remember recipe. all the little things, do you? No, not all of them. Let's see here. <laughs> okay, here's a cup of oats and another cup of oats, making it, of course, the infamous two cups two of cups. oats. Now, wh how many uh, cups of uh, this stuff do you think I need? Four and a half. No, I'm only kidding. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> just about a half day? a cup. Just about half a cup. Okay, half you know how I do the nuts usually is I just put them in a little brown bag and squish them. You know, yeah, with just bang them up, you know, just pound beat them. Beat them up, don't you? Or, yeah, or, uh... uh well, see that? I don't make pie crust, so what, I use my pie crust roller. That's what Bub said five minutes ago. Yeah, well, just step, step on them. But we laughed at him. But, you know, if you kind of do this, watch. All right. Even. You know, it kind of mushes them better. Or even You're, use this, look. Yeah, that does it. Well, why didn't you tell me that before I, just, I spent the past five I, minutes <laughs> chopping them I just thought of them. I just thought of this. Put them in the bag. Yeah, you know what? That's a glove, though. Oh, that's Put them in the glove bag. <laughs> it's the venerable glove bag. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Now you you too. With the glove bag, you have to be careful with all the little fingers. Watch it go in the fingers. We don't want them all in the middle finger, do we? Oops, that's where they're going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so cooking Miss is not our specialty, no. but we're working at it. Will you do a lot of cooking this weekend? Hopefully not, but... Uh, <laughs> what is your big weekend? Oh, you do have one huge one every year. No, well, you know, this is my pop's birthday, so we have a birthday celebration tonight for my grandfather. Are you having to cook for all that? All no, I got somebody else to cook for that. <laughs> Good thinking. But, um, yeah, I don't know. We you know usually our big weekend at home is the 4th. Right, that's, that's the one, one. that you're cooking Christmas. for two days. And, right, yeah. That's the, that's and all the of Guy's one. family comes in, and he's got a big family, and none of them help you. No, <laughs> no. no. Actually, they're they're good cooks. They all bring things, but we do the main stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, are we done with this yet? <laughs> Boy, I hope so. Anyway, I, I now what do I have to take out here? here? I have to take out two cups. You have two fingers. How many fingers does this recipe yeah. call for, Sharon? Put some. Put that's good enough. Two Sharon's, fingers. Sharon says two fingers. Two fingers. Yeah. Two fingers. No, but you got the idea. So ours are going to be a little crunchier than others. Put the cookies in the fingers. Put the cookies in the fingers. That's right. Instead of the fingers in the cookies. Okay, we need two cups of this. I'm trying, you know, at home I wouldn't do it this way. I would take my time and I would do it neatly. But the anyway, pressure is. You grab it with your the fingers pressures and stuff it. <laughs> of television, you all know how it is. Yeah, that's not even two cups yet. Of course, anybody could see that when you have a two cup measure. Yeah, I need a better scooper. Boy, we've worked awfully hard on this recipe for one <laughs> little simple oatmeal cookie, haven't we? Anyway, that's the idea. Then, yeah. you put it in here, 
and then you press it into the pan. You know. But if, if you're not getting all this, all you have to do is send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to Country Oat Squares, Pittsburgh Today, KDK TV, One Gateway Center, Pittsburgh 15222. You separate two cups, folks, self-addressed stamped envelope, don't forget. Mm -hmm. And then you spread this in, and then you spread the jelly in over top oh, of yeah, this well, layer. Oh, yeah, let's put that jelly on there. Well, it has to go in this one, but it's not quite done. Okay, it's almost done, John. This is Smucker's done. Simply Fruit. Spreadable jelly, huh? It's got 16 calories. Spreadable fruit. It's not even And jelly. no fat, no sodium. And this it's one is uh, apricot. apricot. Mm -hmm. You say apricot, I say apricot. <laughs> I say, look out, here look it comes. Look out, bombs away. Okay. So we spread it. Hey, 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 last one coming in. Hit the yeah. target. Yeah, so you spread it out, and then you sprinkle this over top very neatly. Then you, what do you do with them? You bake them at 400 for 25 to 30 minutes, okay? Have and they come out one, looking John. like this. And they look like that after you cut them. And are they good? They still taste great. <laughs> this is his 15th, and he still likes them. <laughs> and I'm not done yet. Yeah, we're going we're to take a break, folks. We'll be back with more of this for today. Join us on Monday's Pittsburgh Today when we talk about undercover corporate spies, private agents hired by companies to ferret out drug abuse in the workplace. And we'll also find out what babies see. like to point out a few things about a unique cheese called Lorraine. First of all, Lorraine is a one-of-a-kind cheese. Some describe it as a mild Swiss. What else, you ask? Well, Lorraine is also low in sodium. Correction, very low in sodium. And you can probably tell by the pictures, so it goes without saying, but I will anyway. Lorraine cheese is delicious. Oh, yes, and where do you find delicious Lorraine cheese? In your supermarket deli, of course. Which leads us to our conclusion. If a mother takes drugs or alcohol during her pregnancy, should she be arrested or have her child taken away from her? You think yes, and you think? I think she should, and, and go on a rehab program. No way. No. no. Well, on the next Oprah Winfrey show, it's happening all across this country. Mothers of drug-exposed infants are facing legal punishment. We'll talk about it on the next Oprah Winfrey show. Friday at 4 on KDKA TV 2. It is now time to check in on today's news and weather. Stacy Smith is in the Eyewitness Newsroom with all the details. Stacy, Thank you, Patrice. A woman from the north side has been charged in the shooting death of her boyfriend. Geraldine Smars is accused of killing 31-year-old Alan Duncan two weeks ago. His body was found in the living room of his home in the city's Spring Garden section. He had been shot once in the chest. Police say Smars admitted to shooting Duncan because he allegedly lied about being divorced and she feared that he would leave her. A man from Homewood was rushed to Presbyterian University Hospital overnight after he had been shot. Robert Higginbottom, who police say is in his 20s, was shot about 3 o'clock this morning at the corner of Dallas and Kelly. Police have no suspects. An escaped prisoner from the State Correctional Institute in Greensburg has been caught. 28-year-old, rather, Richard McIntyre of Mount Washington, was captured by Pittsburgh police last night while on the city's south side. He escaped last month by using a barbell to break out from behind bars, then tying sheets together to drop from a window. McIntyre was serving time for burglary and for robbery. The heavy rain this morning caused the roof of a building to collapse in Lawrenceville. It happened at the furniture liquidator store on Penn Avenue. Now, some furniture and mattresses were damaged by the water. Nobody was injured. Pittsburgh firefighters were called to pump the excess water off the roof and from inside of the store. A tractor-trailer hauling a load of lumber flipped over on the Parkway West in Robinson Township this morning. 
The lumber apparently shifted. The driver was not injured, but pieces of lumber were scattered along the road, causing morning traffic to be snarled by the rain and to go even slower. Now, the tractor trailer got stuck underneath the 10th Street bypass near the convention center today, causing rush hour traffic to back up for a time. The truck was on its way to the strip district. Several tow trucks were called in, and the truck was freed about a half an hour later. Here now is the forecast as prepared in the KDKA Weather Center. A variable cloudiness this afternoon with thunder showers and a high around 82. Tonight, fair and cooler with a low near 52. Tomorrow, mostly sunny and pleasant with a high near 70. Sunday, more sunny skies with a high of 72. And on Memorial Day, more of the same with a high of 76. That is the news for now. We'll have details of these and other stories coming up on Eyewitness News this evening at 6 o'clock. Back to you. Patrice and John. Thank, Thank you, Stacy. Stacey. Have a good Memorial Weekend. We have a trivia winner, a couple of them, a matter, as a matter of fact. Our question was, name the weekend travel spot suggested that boasts over 300 animal species. It is Patrice's backyard. <laughs> Actually, it's Crawford Wildlife Exhibit in Crescent, PA, and our viewer winner was Tracy Cagney, and our audience winner, Cheryl Ricard. That's right, and they're going to win, what did they win? A pair of tickets to the Frankfurt Ballet. That's a nice present. Now, huh? it's in Germany, and we didn't supply no. <laughs> the, the uh, airfare. Yeah, you have to get <laughs> there on your own. Well, have a nice trip. <laughs> Actually, John, I, know, I was showing you this earlier. I'm very, very proud to accept it. Be. Isn't this wonderful? I want you folks to see this. This is from the March of Dimes, the 1988 Mother's March. I was the honorary chairperson for the ninth year. And as you can see, we want you to see, yeah, Isn't there's a mom and her baby. And it's something, well, as you know, families and children and the care of children and concerns is very, and is special very near and, and dear. To you, I and know. the folks with the March of Dimes uh, are, are really out there working. These folks here today are the captains who went out in the, in the cold in the month of January, door to door, to, and, and sent people in their neighborhoods to participate and save, you know, collect. That's fantastic. So let we me, want to thank each and every one of you, too. Let me ask you something. Have you thought about maybe going out in June instead of January? <laughs> We'll it's talk, a thought. We'll it's talk a about it. Just a thought. Why not? Sorry, right, but they raised over $125,000. Oh, it is an increase of $10,000 from last year in this area. And in the United States, the total was $2 million. So we want to thank these people who got out and worked so hard. And we want to thank all of you who helped the fight of birth defects. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you. Give and thank a you hand. for this. This is beautiful. Thank you. I just love it. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So you got big plans for Memorial Day? I, uh, I don't actually. We're sort of looking forward to doing not much of anything. We're going to do a little parade in Aspenwall on uh, Monday morning at mm -hmm. 9.30, their annual parade, Memorial Day parade, and the rest of the time just sort of hang out. Yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. Take you have to easy. eat something, have a picnic or something. Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> I know he never eats. It's so sad. Well, Save anyway. those cookies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> on Monday's show, we will be talking about undercover espionage in the business world. The corporate people are hiring in many companies a, a spy to dig into what's going on in their, com in their company. Drug-wise, crime-wise, who's stealing what? So we'll talk with a spy. You bet. Do that. Also, have a Crime Stoppers episode for you, and we'll talk about what babies see. Yeah. What do they see? Boy, I, don't, I hope they don't see everything. <laughs> <laughs> I got Good some things point. I want to hide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, we want to thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on Monday's Pittsburgh. Have Today. a safe and relaxed Memorial Day, everybody. Bye-bye. Patrice King Brown and John Burnett's hair by Philip Pelusi Hairstyling Salon. Set furnishings by Calagiri Schmeiser Interiors. Guest transportation provided by Allegheny Limousine, a service of Cary of Pittsburgh. Patrice King Brown's Jewelry by Monet. Ain't it delightful? Sugar so lightful. Introducing new Sugar Delight with real cane sugar and half the calories. Every beautiful bite for. Oh, now you can enjoy all the taste of sugar without all the calories. New Sugar Delight. Oh, ain't it delightful. All the taste, half the calories. Sugar so delightful.